Hey cuties, taking a look at the new banners, huh? Oh, go on, get on your knees and get ready to take the full length of this guide. Pause here if you want to look over how everything will be evaluated, because I won't be wasting time. So, should you give him a tug? Don't worry, Arthur's got you covered. Leecho! This fat piece of meat is entirely designed around one concept, of dealing damage in pyramid range. Like combining long slash and magic. Except, you need to move him just to get that second attack off. And, he deals as much damage as he gets bitches. If, for some reason, you want to be a complete hipster and avoid board wipers, but still need to hit a bunch, each can work in some maps, but you'll need to compensate by bringing some combination of repositioners, damage amp, and other damage dealers to cover the spots you can't reach. Ugh, too galaxy brain for me for such questionable payoff. But hey, more power to anyone else who wants to put in that effort. Yo you think it's true that a tanuki's ball sack can stretch up to 10 square feet? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't know. Also, wouldn't know what exactly is going on with this kit? Clearly, the final rolls is something Gyobu does not seem to want. True, it's clear he functions as a healer and tank, part of a glowing class of ones that don't need to move. It's not so clear if he's a damage dealer. A bit? Sometimes? In very specific conditions? Not easy to plan around, and not worth it either. Most confusing of all is his galore of mid and low impact debuffs. Does it work with his tanking or damage dealing? A bit of both? And neither? Debuff explorers like Jurong will thrive with Gyobu, if nothing else. Yeah, maybe just stick to remembering the healing and tanking. Turn off your brain, nothing else matters. Gongli! This fat porker can take the entire enemy team. In a fight, right? Well, that too, yeah. It's pretty amazing how much a single 4-star can do. Without even moving, he can quarter enemy damage, heal, and deny debuffs for his entire team. All without needing to move, all at reliable rates. For his gameplay, he's just standing there. Menacingly! Dungeons and challenges will be a lot safer without you having to try at all. Hey, 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 hey. Wait a second. Being lazy, but effective. Yeah, that sounds exactly like something Gangway would do. He won't be farming anything though, even if he does wield a hoe. Now, if only he had that Riz in the game's story, too. Uh, your time will come, Pigsy. Your time will come. Shenlong! It's good to see you again, MC. I just came by to remind you of my Chapter 10 backstory again, and to tell you not to sacrifice yourself. Hell out! Seriously, Shenlong, I'm already sick of your lecturing, and no amount of poison reversal is gonna make join you in battle for another second worth it. This bull does two things of note. Damage mitigation and damage amp. While both are okay, he also has... Unreliability, limited range of effect, a constant need to move, a terrible attribute, terrible range, terrible backstory, terrible personality, terrible writing, terrible highlight, terrible fanbase, terrible... What were we talking about again? Anyway, flop unit, let's move on. Katobas! This hypermuscular sweetheart represents the frustrating design that also makes sense I can't completely fault it in comp clears that Lifewaters was going for. Yeah, he's a calm clear, but not a very good one with two amps. One is extremely common, and the other is such a confusing mess to explain that I won't even bother explaining it. Quickie at shit lords. He's stuffed to the rim with utility effects, providing damage amp to allies, piercing invasion, and even inexplicably dealing a bit of bonus flat damage. Yes, that's right. Life Wanderers was aiming for calm clears to be mixed and matched with other calm clears to cover each other's shortcomings, so that some combinations work in some tall maps but not others. I just hate how in your face that was with this kit. But props to Life Wanderers for setting such a specific goal and completely succeeding in reaching it. Use him or don't, I don't know, it's up to you I guess, he's okay. Tindalos! It's Tindalos time! He makes a good case for being the best reliable damage mitigator in the game, reducing damage to a 20th for his entire team, thanks to his large effect range and extended movement. In exchange, all other tank utilities, healing and debuff mitigation, is absent. Just like your father. Like you, waiting for your dad for years, you can safely wait for several turns with Tindalos' damage mitigation, slowly chipping the enemy away with various flat damage effects. Or, more likely, just blowing them up through his impressive team damage amp. Just watch out for disabling debuffs, and you'll get a lot of mileage from this unit. Like how your dad had a lot of mileage of the car he drove away with. Uh, he has gone in. My god, calm clear designs are so damn boring. The only thing this boy does is clear his calm. And you know what happens if he doesn't? You'll have two more turns to clear his calm. You'd think his niche would be way too hard for you to use him? 
But as is the case for all calm clears, it's more likely than you think. I personally farmed using this fucker on support for an entire year in the chapter 12 of the tax heat quest, because he can equip the outlaw C booster. You see how important being able to equip a booster is? It can be unfortunately, begrudgingly, useful in meta, even if you do the most boringly useful shit ever. Incidentally, he did fail to clear his calm on numerous occasions. I have those streams on record, you bitch! Uh, thankfully he does as I said, resisting dust your guts and deleting the enemy on his second or third go. Eat my ass, Akia. I do find you cute though. So legit, please eat my ass- Taro Mikey. It's official, boys. She certified Ozville. She guaranteedly disables the skill activation of any enemy she hits, and then some, while doing a respectable amount of damage too. Taro Mighty also comes packed in with the board white amp that, like with Algernon, works well with Shiva board wipes. She's also cooking board white flat damage denial, multiple buff removal, charge denial, and damage mitigation. Her own nade range makes her only okay, but as long as she's aggressively making up to the Oz, and maybe have Wakam Yugana and Smoky God watching in the corner, she can obliterate almost every quest for farming or for challenges. And if you look to your right, we have a jack of all trades in the support class. Damage amp, damage mitigation, debuff mitigation, healing, and positional stability, all wrapped in one bulky bear. Tianzin's getting senile though, as every single part of his kit is plagued by a mix of unreliability, positional dependence, move dependence, and middling impact. Gramps here has no speed or reliability like he had in his prime, but he's wizened enough to face dungeons or longer challenges. I wouldn't personally pull for his kit, but it's not completely unusable in the very least. Also, who cares about any of that? He's cute! No, no. You don't see unit designs like these nowadays. Whew, good riddance. Usually, for battles, you need to overcome the enemy's mechanics. No shows a case where you need to overcome mechanics from your own team. You'll enjoy a nice spit rose from dealing with two sets of mechanics. A nice way to artificially increase the challenge level, if you're a freak. Okay, so there is a payoff for playing around their mechanics. Next. Every turn, it'll ramp up and it'll fill over time, and at three max stacks, they'll have their charge ready every three to four turns. You're also encouraged to have encouraged as far as possible from the enemies in the turn before you hit them for extra damage. Uh, you're not gonna be using this 99 times out of 100. And the one time you do use it would be for a pretty lame joke. Ugh, it's not worth it. It's not worth it! For God's sake, it's not worth it! Don't bother! Get out of here now! Just go! Ellie. I think a lot of people don't think much of this kit, but I'm here to tell you it's pretty special. Ellie is a heal specialist, not just any run-of-the-mill female healer you'll find from your local isekai. While her actual healing is only okay, she provides an incredibly unique and diverse charcuterie board of heal-related effects, including hots, heal amp, heal reversal, personal lifesteal, and unique to Ellie alone, restoring to allies the ability to lifesteal. This last bit is guaranteed out of the box just for her showing up, so now anyone can heal tank, and native tanks can now hyper tank. There aren't many dedicated healers worth remembering in this game, but Ellie and her one-of-a-kind abilities should definitely be on that list. Zanzayu. Briefly considered to be extremely strong for... all oh, 10 minutes. The four life hunters decided to nerf him to irrelevance before his debut event even ended. Sandeo has the exclusive ability to bestow all of his held buffs to allies whenever he attacks. This buff spread is restricted to odd turns only. Not being able to spread his buffs every turn naturally impacts his ability to farm. I feel bad for anyone who pulled specifically for his kit pre-patch. And Life Wonder should be ashamed to have made no reparations for this alarming nerf. That's more of a history lesson though, so to summarize this kit, he has native damage amp and damage mitigation, can spread those and any other buffs he has, sometimes, and he can pierce evasion in a really awkward way. Like his own body, this kit's been split into a fantastic one on odd turns and a planned one on even turns. You can still split me into though. Now obviously, you won't be pulling in these pickup banners for any current event bonus going on. No, get that away from here. Get, get! <coughs> There are a handful of strong choices here, though most are better suited for non-farming content. For challenges, you can probably make do with finding a carry support with whatever ragtag roster you currently have. But if you want an easier time, the Fairy Banner's got some fantastic choices between Team Delos and Ganglier. Both banners also have some other decent to strong picks for both farming and challenges alike. Katolopas and Akiya Gangan can take scuffles and tall map requests on, if they're in the right team. 
While Tower Mighty and LE's unique kits can have extreme impact on challenges with the right setups. While no one is must have, there are definitely gems in both banners that are very close to it. Pull the Fairy Banner if you need tanks or team damage amp. Pull the Healing Banner if you need Calm Clears and healing, or want a chance at unique utilities. Okay, that's it, bye!